I want to bring in Ambassador John Bolton, former ambassador to the United Nations, national security advisor under President Trump. Is this Vladimir Putin's new endgame? Well, honestly, I have to say, I thought it was his original endgame. Uh, before the war, I thought he might faint at an attack on Kiev. I thought what he was going to go after was the eastern part and the southern part, exactly as you describe it. And the reason for that is that if you looked at a map of the distribution of Russian speakers versus Ukrainian speakers uh, in Ukraine, those provinces you've just outlined and a few others are predominantly or substantially Russian speaking. And if you overlaid that with another map uh, based on faith, uh, that would be the, those would be the regions predominantly or substantially Russian Orthodox as opposed to Catholic or, or Ukrainian Orthodox. So I don't think they're pro-Russian anymore, but I think in Putin's view, those are the territories that most belong to Mother Russia. And with respect to the southern part, down around Odessa and the rest of that coast, as you say, there is a strategic implication to give Russia total control of that part of the Black Sea coast. Very significant. Honestly, I thought if they had gone for this at the beginning, they might have already achieved their objectives. Yeah, and if you overlaid another map, which is Ukraine's natural resources of oil, gas, uh, minerals, uh, and metals that you need to make electric batteries and the like, that's all exactly where the Russians would take over. The next part of this is sort of the end game for Vladimir Putin. A big part of that will be what happens uh, in the French elections. Uh, those are on Sunday. Marie Le Pen is taking on Emmanuel Macron. Macron had tried to play peacemaker between Vladimir Putin and Ukraine and the West. Uh, is it possible that Emmanuel Macron gets thrown out by a far right uh, maybe not Putin friend, but certain uh, Putin enthusiast in Marie Le Pen? Uh, I think there's almost no chance Macron is going to win, uh, not because he's so terribly popular, but I, I think he will get enough anti-Le Pen votes to win. It will be much closer than the election five years ago. In that election, in this runoff, the second round, which we'll see on Sunday, uh, Macron uh, really uh, whomped Le Pen. He got, I think, 66 percent. She got 34 percent. It's going to be much closer this time uh, between a six and ten point margin. Uh, but if uh, it, and there, there's some question about the turnout and there's obviously some uncertainty. But I, I don't I think it will be much closer. But I, I, I would find it very, very surprising if uh, Le Pen won. You think about the difference between the two people, and you think about French politics normally being fairly moderate, but Emmanuel Macron wants to raise the pension age, he wants to plant 140 million trees, some food vouchers and the like. Marie Le Pen, limit asylum claims, pull the military wing out of NATO, ban the hijab in public, considers Russia an ally. Uh, you think about, say, Boris Johnson and Brexit. Uh, and then Donald Trump's victory sort of cemented this popular movement. Emmanuel Macron's victory and Joe Biden's victory was this return to normalcy in the Western world. Uh, is there now this strong push back towards a real populist bend uh, in Western Europe? No, I, I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't buy the argument that there's a populist trend. Uh, through through the Western democracies. Uh, I, I think the circumstances in each country make a big difference. Uh, I think Trump was an aberration in the American political context. And, and Brexit, I think, was a, was an issue deeply ingrained in, in British politics for a long time. Here, I think the most important thing in France, though, is the break up of the of the major parties the parties that have dominated french politics in much of the fifth republic the uh, the french socialist party for example which held the presidency before macron won in 2017 in the first round of this election the socialist party candidate got two percent of the vote almost at the bottom of the pile and the the so-called republican party of france uh, its candidate got seven percent of the vote so i think mm -hmm. after macron who really has no party as such, uh, it, that, that's when the real shakeup can, can take place. And there are parliamentary elections in France in about six months. And, and how that shakes out will tell us a lot about how Macron will be able to govern. Yeah, we've seen how important now an American alliance with Europe is as it relates to sort of putting a blockade against Vladimir Putin and his ambitions. Bring this back to Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. As Putin is now looking uh, at us and we are looking at him, has he yet uh, reached uh, the old, you know, push with the knife or the, the sword 
and re when if you he hit mush, keep going until you hit something strong and retreat. Has he hit something strong yet? No, he hasn't. And he faces a very difficult uh, uh, condition here. The Russian military has taken a huge reputational hit uh, because of its obvious failures in the first two months of the war. So I think Putin, uh, if for no other reason, forget Ukraine for a minute, he's got to come to some kind of military victory that he can announce and pass the smile test to restore the reputation of, of his army. And if he doesn't do that, uh, I think that is regime threatening for him. So the prospect here is he's just going to keep on going and, uh, and you know, we're in a race against time. How much of all these weapons that, um, that uh, U.S. and European leaders promise will be delivered to Ukraine? That's great to make the promise. When do they get to the front lines? Yeah, and the Ukrainians are now asking for $7 billion a month in cash in addition to the weapons to try to supplement uh, their economy. Mr. Ambassador, it's always good to see you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Likewise, yeah. glad to be here. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.